There are shows with psychics. And there are shows with doctors. But there's no show like the psychic and the doc. Your practical paranormal power unleashed. This show synthesizes the talents of world-class medium Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, psychic explorer, and street-smart spiritualist, behavioral psychologist, Dr. Pat Basili. All subjects are on the table and no topic is taboo. Inspiration, insight, action, and fun as Mark Anthony connects callers with loved ones in spirit in tandem with Dr. Pat's fresh, no-nonsense, street-smart, intuitive insights. And she is hilarious. Extraordinary problems require extraordinary solutions, which may come from this side or the other side. This is The Psychic and The Doc. And And it it starts now. Hey, hey, everybody. (laughs) Welcome to The Psychic and The Doc. This is our, go ahead, Mark, tell him. This is our ho, 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 what do you know, Christmas in July show. <laughs> and for those of you who are seeing on camera, Dr. Pat has Santa Claus a la Miss Piggy. And there's a hovering Christmas church in the background. So um, we're having a lot of fun today, everybody, <laughs> because um, a lot of lot of stores, a lot of uh, places talk about Christmas they can't in July. Hear them all. Because it's six months from now. Okay, we got it. We got it, Linda. See, this is what producers do. When you hire producers, this is what they do. They they wave Christmas ornaments around behind uh, behind you. Uh, Thank you. Don't don't drop the piggy. Wow. You know, this is a thing. Let's talk about this. This Christmas in July is a thing. I didn't know it was a thing until Linda is uh, attached to the Hallmark Channel. So the Hallmark Channel, that comes on before the News Channel. Well, a News Channel recently, but Hallmark, the whole month of July. I didn't put it together, Mark. The whole month. They've been doing Christmas, Christmas movies. July. Yeah, I know, because when I'm sitting there channel surfing, I'm going through, and it's like, you know, because guys, we always do this thing. We get into the guide. We just flip, 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 because nothing's on, nothing. On. And it's like, why are all these Christmas movies on? And then it's like, oh, yeah, right. Christmas. That's why we're doing the show is Christmas in July. But it's more than just that. It's more than just that. Don't you think, Dr. Pat? I think it is. You know, I was talking to Gail West today. She's one of our hosts. And she said something so fascinating to me. And I've just got to relate to it. You know, she described the a new kind of energy as a portal opening. Now, for you, Mark, that's every show. <laughs> <laughs> that's every show. We're opening that's, portals. <laughs> that's, every, that's every time we, we have callers on the line. And I want to say to all of you, this is Christmas in July, but it is a live call-in show, 1-800-930-2819. And I, honestly, I apologize for the reflective glasses because I don't know where my other glasses are. They probably are in a Christmas present. Um, but I love the whole Christmas in July energy. Mark, what does it mean to you? Well, the subtitle of the show is, it's Christmas in July, and the subtitle is, Are You Present? Oh my God, I saw that. Yeah. And that means a lot of things. You know, yesterday is history, tomorrow is mystery, but today is a present. It is is the present, which is why it's a present. And being present is 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 a gift. It's also very important because all too often we're focusing on the past and what went wrong and who said this to me and why I didn't do that or whatever. And, and hurts and pains, or we're obsessing about future events that aren't here yet, and we're not living in the moment, living in the present. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a play on words, uh, are you present, but it has uh, multiple meanings, like spiritual messages do, and many of the things that that we do and we guide people with on this show. Christmas in July, you know, people say, I wish every day could be Christmas. And when people say that, it's not so much about, you know, getting the gifts, at Christmas, people tend to be more polite, compassionate, considerate to one another. So why not today? Why not every day? So that's in part why we're doing the Christmas in July show. I love it. I First of all, I am 
well, I'm a December baby. So we can start out with that conversation, right? What does it mean to be a December baby? Well, for most of the time, what it means to be is a December baby, especially if you're, you know, if you're early December, the second or third, you know, you, you may make it okay without the overlap. But if you're like anywhere past the 10th, right, you're the 10th or the 11th, you're like 14 days away. And so being that Christmas or that December child, you get a whole different experience from things. But what I loved about it, and I love it to this day, you know, Mark, I don't know. You know, I've heard some people talk about uh, Christmas. You don't tell the truth to your kids. You pretend and you make up a big lie about a man and a beard. And I'm like, somebody actually said that to me about the show. And I said, hey, do you go to movies? So yeah, I take my kids. Away. So I said, you go to any of like the Marvel movies? Yeah. Oh, my kids love it. Well, how about Disney? You go to Disney movies? Oh yeah. I said, okay. How many of them movies you're watching and your kids watching are reality? You see, we live in a time and we are human beings and we have the capacity to imagine. Right. Now, I don't know if the pet rabbits in that we don't have a pet, but you know we got little Oscar back there. I don't know if that rabbit back there has got an imagination. All I know is every day he comes out there and stares at the glass door at Linda. What's he thinking? Is he thinking she's from New Jersey? Why doesn't she go home? Is that what she's thinking? Uh, well, we don't know, but as human beings, we have such a capacity for more. And Christmas and the celebration of Christmas and the celebration of Christ for so many people globally and people that don't celebrate Christ, celebrate Christmas. So today, is it a celebration show, Mark? It, it is. <laughs> and even for the people who don't necessarily um, celebrate Christ, there is the Christ consciousness. And the Christ consciousness in Hinduism, it's it, they refer to as consciousness. There's a Buddha consciousness. It's an expanded consciousness which means that it's an acknowledgement that we're all energetically interrelated. Basically, humanity, we're all brothers and sisters. And even though um, you know we may look different, have different cultures, uh, different ways of doing things, we're biologically the same. And it's important to have that consciousness because if everybody started looking at each other as brothers and sisters would there be war would there be violence i mean these are the things that christ was was teaching these are the things that buddha that the the hindu sages that every great um, belief system teaches it's all about peace and love understanding and so christmas embodies those things unfortunately capitalism being capitalism it's turned into you know how much can you spend you know if you give me a really expensive gift that means you love me and 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 all that but but the uh, original meaning of christmas is about compassion it's about uh, caring for each other it's about common civility which in our current society seems to to be I don't want to say ignored because there's a lot of really good people out there, but there's a lot of people that are embracing um, the very opposite of that. And so it's important for us to acknowledge this consciousness all throughout the year. Yeah. You know, I love that we're talking about this now because I I started a new spiritual practice. Um, and so people always ask me, you know, like every day, Pat, we hear from you and you're talking about a new spiritual practice. Okay, so let me just be very clear to, to everybody out there. If you are me, what happens is you have a lot going on. You have a lifetime of healing. And so my version of a spiritual practice is to make sure I don't lose sight that I'm a spiritual being in human skin, at least for the moment. Now, Mark, clearly what you do, right? Let's just talk right. about this because this is what this show is about. Jennifer right. will be right there. Jennifer from California will be right there. Um, people connect with you and then they connect with you 
and you connect them to spirit. Yes. Not sure which spirit we're going to connect them with, but that's what you do. Right. It's pure love, isn't it? It is. Spirit communication is about love. Love is energy. You know, because people say, well, you know, what you do can't be proven. It's like, well, then prove love. What is love? Can you put it under a microscope? Can you subject it to some type of test? But we all know when we love someone, we all know when we love something, it's an energy. Mm. And spirit communication is a loved-based practice because that's why animals can come through. Any being capable of the emotion of love is capable of spirit communication. So, you know, if you had a pet alligator, chances are that creature is not coming through because it's not, you know, a an emotion those those creatures seem to to have and maybe science will prove me wrong, but human spirits will come through why? Because they know what we're going through. They're energetically linked to it. This these are some of the things I explain in the in my book The Afterlife Frequency and in Evidence of Eternity and actually in Never Letting Go as well. All three of my books is that we're all energetically linked. And when we're grieving or when we're in an upset state, we send out these electromagnetic brainwave impulses, which spirits being electromagnetic energy pick up on. And the reason spirits come through, they're not here to harm us, scare us, or control us. They're here to help us, to guide us. It's all about love, healing, and resolution. Yeah. You know, I think, and I, this is not my arena, but I, I just want to say it. I think the movie, uh, one of my favorite, favorite movies, I, I, I don't care how many times I watch it. I know how it's going to end. I know the end of the movie. The Sixth Sense with yeah. Bruce Willis <laughs> and did more to help us with an understanding yes. than I think anything that had come before it. And what I loved about that was it was exactly what you just said. You know, it had more to do with how to help, how to help. And yeah, there was some parts of it that just scared me like nobody's business. Okay. Yeah. But then it unfolded. So you understand it. But the show today is we don't know what's going to come forth. And I don't know who the people are that say uh, they don't believe. If you listen to the show, I am in awe when we do a show and you're connecting and off and here you go, Mark. Here goes Mark. Now somebody's coming through. Okay, I don't mimic you very well, but I'm going to do my best. No, go ahead. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, wait a minute. And this this is Mark, everybody. Just watch him on the show. Now, somebody's coming through and God, I feel like my throat is closing up, but wait a minute, I've got a pain in my chest and there's just fluid coming through now. And, you know, I don't know, they're telling me about strawberries. Now, that is a version of one of the calls that I remember very succinctly because I was so enthralled with it. I forgot that I had a part to do in the show. And the and the the person that was hearing this couldn't wait. And you were trying to say, just wait a minute, just wait. And she just couldn't wait. And she knew exactly who that was. Yeah. In the world we live in, I love the expression, you know, what is it? Show me I'm from Missouri or someplace like that. Yeah. You, you don't get any closer to a validation and you have a formal scientific word for it. But if it's not that, then please help me understand what it is. Please help us understand if it's not what we're talking about, or you have a different version of it, or you want to help us with the different version of it, then we'd love to entertain that. But you can't be that right and be that wrong. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to go right to the phones. Remember that you can't be that right and be that wrong. Sounds like a title of a song. I, I think it's. It could be a Christmas song, a Christmas in July song. It All right, but we'll, we'll be right back. Uh, so everyone stay <laughs> tuned. We're going to the phones as soon as we get back. This is oh. Psychic in the Doc on the Transformation Network. <laughs>
I want to welcome everybody back to the psychic and the doc. And for those of you out there, it is a live call and show. This is where we bring you on and boy, Mark is ready to see what we can do to connect you with spirit. And then we'll see what I can do to help connect you with the real world here. Um, Emily, who do we have up first? Up first, we have Jennifer from California. Jennifer, you are live. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, how are you guys today? You know, pretty good. I'm doing pretty good at the moment. Mark, yeah. how are you doing? I'm I'm doing I'm okay. doing great. Yeah. How, Jennifer, I, how can I, how can we help you? Well, I had someone pass a couple years ago. It was uh, two years ago this July, so that's kind of apropos with Christmas in July. Um, I got a message from this person. And I want to know if it's real. We were just talking about this. Okay. Now, Jennifer, um, I'm going to open up to frequency and spirits are going to come forward. Sometimes the person that you want to hear from may not be the one that steps forward. So just, just keep that in mind. So, you know, make All sure right. that you're open to whoever comes through. I'm getting a, a male energy stepping forward. And what I'm getting with him is I feel like I'm blinking. Now, when I say I feel like I'm blinking, what that indicates to me, Jennifer, is he was having difficulty with his mental clarity and focus prior to passing. Yeah. And I'm also getting this heaving sensation, like <clears throat> like um, his his chest, uh, his his whole abdominal region. It's almost like the it's it's the sensation you get when uh, with the dry heaves. So this could be an indicator of nausea. Um, nausea can be that he may have been having difficulty with eating and or holding down food prior to passing. Sometimes nausea is a cancer indicator. I'm not sure about that one just yet. The other thing that I'm getting is I feel, ugh, I feel all this electrical shocks running through my whole body. Now, electrical shocks don't necessarily mean like he was electrocuted. This could mean there was a neurological component could be um, seizures, convulsions, spasms prior to passing. This poor guy, he was he was pretty sick. I mean, he's making no no bones about it from from spirit from the other side that he felt really absolutely miserable prior to passing, and uh, he looked at death as as a release, actually as a gift, based on on the misery that he was going through. There's one last thing before before I ask you. Um, I'm getting this this uh, tingly and the shock sensation on my tongue and a bitter metallic taste. A bitter metallic yeah. taste, Jennifer, can be sometimes that's gunshot, but usually that indicates um, medications, legal or otherwise. And once again, that could be another trigger for uh, seizures, spasms, convulsions, something of a neurological component. Does any of this resonate with you? Yeah, he was always complaining of a metallic taste or smell. And, I'm sorry, I'm having um, a hard time. I'm, I'm having a very I hard time understanding. Hold, hold on, hold on, Jennifer. Are you on a speakerphone or something? Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, can it you was, take that off? Because uh, all I'm hearing is muffled sounds. I want to yeah. hear your voice clearly, okay. please. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Better. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So he was always complaining about, or had been complaining about, a metallic taste of smell. There we go. And yeah. um, and it turned out that his kidneys and liver were shutting down. It was what? His liver and kidneys were shutting down. Oh, so that would make yeah. sense with the bile and all that. Okay, so we got him here. Mm -hmm. All right. Let Let's see. Now, I know you're looking for a particular sign, but he is switching tracks and he's showing postage stamps, postmark, postage stamps, postmark, postage stamps. Now, uh, most of us are paying our bills online now and all that, but is there anything in particular about stamps or a postmark, like maybe you had to go to the post office today or something? Um, and, and don't worry, when a message comes through, it, a piece of information comes through, Jennifer, it isn't always about the spirit. It could be about you or somebody else close to you in this world. Now, what's interesting about postmark, I mean, my name is Mark. He could have had a name, Mark or Marty, but I'm seeing a postage, postage stamp and a postmark. Does anything go with what, whatever resonates with you? Don't worry about how it applies. We'll figure that out. 
Well, I had to talk to the IRS today because I got a letter from them. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, and nobody <laughs> generally likes getting letters from the IRS unless there's a check involved. <laughs> okay. I mean, coming to Correct. us, not, not to them. Okay. So that means he's around you and aware of what's happening. And he's showing me a little tiny Buddha. You know, like the little, like the little fat Buddhas, yes. uh, little tiny fat happy Buddha. And the Buddha's got his hands up in the um, air and smiling. And your friend's laughing. And by laughing, he's not laughing at you. He's emanating joy, resonating happiness. And he says, you deserve this. All right. Does that make uh -huh. sense to you in any way? Yeah, everything was fine. It was fun. Is there anything about Buddha, Buddhism, fun. anything like that that might ring a bell with you? Um, his dad was a martial artist, and so he had a Buddha that my son had his dad's house, and he had it in his room from his dad, and he Perfect. loved his Buddha. Perfect. He's telling me that you get a lot of signs from him, and he's talking about the visual one. I feel like these two... Um, it's like two orbs, two two balls of light coming together, merging and then separating, merging and then separating. So I don't know if that's the sign that you're looking for, but he's talking about visual signs that he sends to well, you in the form of light. Now you can respond. Go ahead. A year ago on his birthday, when we celebrated it, we took pictures at the beach and there were orbs in the pictures. Ooh. That's not, yeah, that's not a sign that I'm talking about today, but that is the one that I got last yeah. year. <laughs> well, then, because you see, you said, well, it, I get signs from him. Is that it? So that's the one he's addressing. So that's a yes. And then I'm going to turn you over to Dr. Pat. But first, I'm tasting orange juice. Now, lots of people like orange juice. Okay. Oranges are rich in potassium. You know, orange juice tastes good. But there's something about oranges, orange juice, or a potassium issue that maybe he had and or you might have. Anything there? He probably had a potassium issue. Okay. What about you? What's what's with you and oranges or orange juice? You love it, hate it, indifferent, um, but... I don't care. For, well, I like it, but it doesn't like me. It gives me a, there a we go. stomach. There we go. So that's that is another way he's letting you know he's around you and aware of what's happening because when spirits bring in pieces of information, it isn't always about the spirit. It could be about you and it's not always about something you like. It could be something that you dislike. So the sense I'm getting and then I'll turn get turned over to Dr. Pat is that listen to your body. Your body is telling you that yeah, the orange juice may taste sweet, but but the reaction you have to it is not sweet. Dr. Pat, what's, what's right. your, what's your take? Yeah, my, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, when you called in, I wonder if you just wanted a message or you're, if you feel, it sounds like you, no, it feels like you're looking for something. Can I ask about well, that? What, what, yeah, what it was is that I usually text him every week um, instead of writing or anything like that, I send him a text and I do, I'm a massage therapist and I usually go to a specific person's house and I always used to text him every time I got there when I was heading back because he always worried about me driving at night. So I was, a couple of weeks ago, I was texting him and I texted him that I got there and when I got back in the car when I was back, I picked up the phone and on his where I had texted him, there was a message written that I didn't write about a message from my child in heaven. So wow. my question is, is that from him? Who else could it be from? You know, if you're going to ask me, I'm going to ask Mark, but I'll tell you yeah. that the thing that I've learned sometimes, especially when things like that happen, um, when they've happened to me, who else? Let me ask you a question. How would you have gotten that message otherwise? I would. I couldn't have. Right. Well, I okay. could not have. So, Mark, what do you think? I, I want to know. Um, I want to know what the message was. Um, because I have an idea of of. Okay. All right, go go ahead. What what did the message say? The message talked about that he missed me, that he saw me every day, that he watched over me, he saw how miserable I was and how I was hurting. Yeah, that's why and I asked you the that question. Was the gist I did. Of it. 
Yeah. So how is that a bad message? No, it wasn't bad. It's just, it's like, you know, I want to believe that it was from him and then I keep questioning it because, you yeah. know, it's, Hold it's on. like it's too Hold good to be true. <laughs> Hold on. Let's back up a bit. Um, one of the concepts that, that I um, discuss in my books and I teach are, is known as multiple meaning messages. Now, after he identified himself, he brought up the postmark, the letter. Metaphor, uh -huh. see, see where I'm going with this? Is yes. okay. Yes, you got a letter from the IRS. All right, that that was that's one. But the other one could be the literal postcards or letters from heaven. Do you see what I'm saying? So yes. the reason you brought up the postmark and the the um the stamp could be a metaphor that this message is his letter to you. That's another way of looking uh -huh. at it. Because it's it makes too much sense. Also, yeah. he keeps talking about. Uh, please forgive me, and I'm not psychic and a doctor packing a test. I don't flip right. out, but butterflies and dragonflies. But I'm getting butterflies and dragonflies filling my my mind's eye. Do those particular insects, those particular creatures, have any? um relevance it could be the actual creature it could be a logo a, a tattoo but i'm seeing butterflies and dragonflies well i've seen butterflies and dragonflies not a lot um i recently got a notebook that had butterflies all over it you um, recently got a, what, what like a notebook she got a notebook with a butterflies notebook. all over a it recently no right. there a you notebook go. and what with do you butterflies write butterflies all over it with butterflies okay so we got the butterflies now let's focus on the dragonfly and now here's what's interesting about the dragonfly i'm kind of seeing not the actual live dragonfly but it looks like made out of wires and crystals like something you might buy and hang in your window I do have a, we had, he had put up a dragonfly, um, like, uh, what do you call it, chimes, uh, at our back window, and it had broken, and I have them in the house on his altar. Boom. Mm. This is what I call wow. a verifiable fact following the message. When a spirit gives us a message of an explanatory advisory nature, Okay, and the, the message was about the postmark and the stamp, and that was his message to you. And that sounds nice, but then he immediately followed up with butterflies and dragonfly. You just got a notebook with butterflies on the cover and notebooks. You write notes to people. And then the dragonfly was actually a chime that he put up. And as I said, it wasn't a live dragonfly. It was like made with wires and crystal. And so these are the verifiable facts which mean that this is how we know we got um we properly received and interpreted the message before yeah. that yeah. this is a, a phenomenon that i have been observing for a long time yeah. other mediums that come to watch me when i do events they say that they they started realizing verifiable fact following a me message as well so yes that text was from him yes. yes he's around and the happy buddha not only means that you have a happy buddha that you kept in his room but he is the happy buddha meaning yeah. he's happy in spirit i have a question for you and yeah. I, I want to go back to the action item though before you go um so for me i put this all together and i say you for some reason you got that letter from the IRS, right? Yeah. And what'd you do with it? I called the IRS to try to make it right. And then okay. I put it in a file. Did you get it? Did you make it right? Yes. So it's all settled? Yes. And I asked for his help in doing that. So you're in pretty good shape right now. So your question. I'm in okay shape, not not good, but no, my question was more about the test. I know, but there's something that's making you not in okay shape. That's what I'm trying to get at. I miss him. That's what I thought. Of yeah. course you do. Of course you do. Yeah. Yeah, of course you do. And you know, we're gonna I'm gonna say to you what we've said to so many, so many, 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 many other people. Mark, there are support groups, right? Yes. 
And we really encourage people to really look at them and see if there's some help for you. You know, nobody knows the pain that people go in for great. They, they, we don't know, but I'm telling you, there are people and groups out there that are amazing. Can you please mention that, Mark? Yes. Helping parents heal. Um, I yeah, cannot I recommend enough. Oh, you belong. Great. Um, I'm going to be there in Phoenix in on the um, third week of, of August. Um, I'm, Me I'm too. One of the, yeah, oh, great. Oh, good. Well, then come up and introduce yourself. I'll be yes. giving a keynote talk uh-huh. and, um, and, you know, say, you know, I'm, I'm the caller from the show because Helping Parents Heal is such an amazing and healing organization. And it's beautiful because they incorporate mediumship, spirit communication as an important step in the journey through grief. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, like Dr. Pat said, nobody, nobody knows what you're going through. You're the only one who knows what you're going through. And it is overwhelming. And of course you miss your son. You'll always miss your, the physical presence of your son, but it's important to understand which you do clearly that your relationship with him has transformed from one of a physical nature to one of a spiritual nature. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please. Yeah. Please connect with Mark. Thank you. Um, Let's take a very, very short break. And when we come back, we're right back on the phones. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening, watching The Psychic and the Doc. And before we go right back to the phones, uh, Mark, again, please let people know how they can find out what you're doing, where you're going to be, how to sign up for your newsletter, books, all of the above. Thank you, Dr. Pat. I'm going to invite everybody to sign up for my website. Uh, um, Go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. Uh, My website is afterlifefrequency.com. And on August 9th and 10th, uh, that's just in in two weeks, I have an online light circles on uh, Friday, August 9th and Saturday, August 10th. Light circles are limited to six people uh, so that everybody is is going to receive a reading and you can find out about that. Go to the calendar of events on my website, afterlifefrequency.com. As I spoke with our last caller, Jennifer, I'm going to be one of the keynote speakers at Beth, uh, at the... Um, Helping Parents Heal Conference, scroll through my um, calendar of events. And if you can't be there in person, you can still get an online pass so that you can you can benefit from the three-day conference, August 20 through 3rd through the 25th. And um, also, I, I recommend you sign up for and subscribe to Best Holistic Life magazine. You can find out about that on my website. And then in October, I'm just going to give a snippet here. I will be uh, one of the presenters at the Edgar Casey Association for Research and Enlightenment, the Ancient Mysteries Conference. I'll be speaking about the mysteries, secrets, and curse of Tutankhamun's tomb. And uh, I can guarantee that it's going to be a fun, I- exciting adventure. But please, everyone visit my website, which is afterlifefrequency.com. Oh, and if I can throw in one last thing, mm-hmm. on August 2nd, I'll be returning to Coast to Coast AM to talk with George Norrie about alien abductions and the readings that I've conducted on people who claim to have been abducted by aliens. And if that's not going to be an interesting show, I don't know what is. So uh, everybody, thank you so much. Dr. Pat, uh, what do you got going on? I know, how's your Unstuckable? Unstuckable is coming along really, really well. Yeah, Unstuckable is coming along really, really well. I mean, um, we made a decision uh, in our launch and uh, we made this decision to switch the priority of channels we were launching. Um, The latest information that has come out on health and well-being and mental health, it, it just, it hit me hard. And we are switching up the second channel, which these channels will be launched in parallel the women's channel, and then the health and wellness channel. Um, that That's a switch we made based on popular demand, really. And I've already reached out to Dr. Ronnie DeLuce, uh, Dr. Nusheen Darvish, 
uh, and that that is the channel that is going to help people the most. And when I talk about health and wellness, come on, we're talking about body, mind, spirit, you know, all of those things. Uh, conventional medicine, allopathic, chiropractors, holistic practitioners, energy healers. So it's the whole thing, just like Holistic Life magazine. That's right. <laughs> all right, Emily, who do we have? Okay, up next, we have Elisa from Oregon. Elisa, you are live. Hey there, how Hi, can Mark. we help you tonight? Um, well, I just wanted to basically see who comes through us hoping to get some information on the sure. complaint okay. that I recently lost. Okay. okay, Elisa, um, I feel the spirit of a male coming through, and he feels like he could be connected to you through your father's side of the oh, excuse me, your mother's side of the family. The reason I'm saying that is when my right hand tingles, that tends to be your fa uh, your mother's side of the family. Left hand would be your father's side of the family. Okay. Now this could be a grandparent. This could be an uncle. Um, let me let me work with him for a second. Ow. Okay. When I'm saying ow, I'm feeling this terrible pain running right down my sternum, the bone that that separates um, the two sides of our rib cage. Um, oh. This feels like um, this could be open heart surgery because they have to crack open. I just just talking about it hurts, but this gentleman out. And I'm getting pains going through actually the uh, my right lung all the way into my rib cage in the back. So this feels like there was a major cardio pulmonary heart and lung involvement. But I believe that this gentleman may have had open heart surgery. It appears that he he survived the surgery, but then he was in a frail and depleted condition for some time afterwards. He was he was um, a senior citizen when he passed. I'm trying to get a fix on his age. I think he looked older than he was. He looks like he's in his 80s, but he could have been in his 70s. So he just had a really worn out, a lot of lines in his face. Looks like he still had most of his hair prior to passing. I'm getting numbness in my feet, which makes sense. Um, that would be circulation issues. His passing was not a surprise. He knew that he was declining, and I get the sense that he was able pretty much to say his goodbyes to everybody. Do you recognize this person? Um, my mother was adopted, and she didn't have any siblings that she knew about until after her mother passed. She had learned who her, that her, she did have a, her biological father had tried to reach her for many years, and he had passed only a month prior to her her mother um, wow. passing. And she's in contact now with her with her her I guess that would be step grand uh, cousins. But she hasn't seen any because they're all on the, um, they're all on the west coast. Well, I mean, hold so. on, hold on. What I'm looking for is somebody that matches that um, that description. If it doesn't make sense on your mom's side of the family, it could okay. make sense on, on your dad's side, side of the family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, because I kept saying father. All right. Your would that be your your dad's father then? Yes. My my okay. father had heart problems, but my grandfather had quadruple bypass surgery, and he was he was in like. Um, a nursing home prior to his passing. Okay. Okay. And is your dad here in this world too? No, he's not. Okay. What did your father pass from? Um, we don't really know them in dementia. Um, all right, right, hold, hold, hold on. Hold the on. Reading, readings that you were picking up on the first call had, had related to mine as well. Right. And that's because that's, um, that's collective consciousness communication where one spirit arcs over to another one. All right. So I want to um, it, it take a longer explanation than time we have on the show. So let mm -hmm. me focus on your paternal grandfather coming through and he showed me a pool table and he's racking the balls and now he's grabbing the eight ball and holding it up. Now that can mean either you or he or someone close to you liked to play pool, but because he's holding up the eight ball, Eight ball is a very interesting uh, symbol because it could mean something about the eighth month, which is August. So that could mean a birth, death, anniversary, or event. Birth, death, anniversary, or event connect you, grandfather, or someone close to you, planet Earth, or in spirit, in August. It could mean the eighth of any month. 
interesting thing about eight balls if there's anyone that passed from a drug overdose an eight ball is a um a stimulant and an and a sedative combination and in, in like heroin cocaine these days it would be like oxycontin and fentanyl mm -hmm. the other thing about mm -hmm. the eight ball is if you turn it on its side the eight becomes the infinity symbol so i know mm -hmm. we got a lot here it could be the eighth of any month or the eighth month, August. It could be um, an eight ball in the drug sense or some some reference to the infinity symbol. And remember, it doesn't have to apply to your grandfather. It w could make sense to you in any other way. Go ahead. Yes, it, it makes sense. And you know, we are all eternal. Um, and I don't think it has to do anything with pool. I think it has to do with... Um, with the um the sense of um of the uh what did you say the um the sedative stimulant and also just the etern just the eternal i think it's quite part more of more of um, like a warning or a concern an expression of mm -hmm. love okay now we're switching to another spirit did your father um like he was like here one day gone the next here one day gone the next because what I'm getting is a male energy coming through, and I feel like sort of a um, an abrupt or unexpected passing. And and I I know you said he had some health problems, but I get like I feel real tired, like want to lie down. I feel like I'm laying down on the couch. Could be a bed, but it feels like a couch. And then just letting go. Does any of that make sense? Not a relative. Uh, well, my my uncle did commit suicide when I was younger. But I did have a friend of mine that, that lied down um, and never woke up. And that was a male, um, then that's the, that's the one we got. That's the one we got. Yes. Okay. How did your dad pass? You said you didn't know. Well, no. I think he just gave up. And he just, he just, he was, he was not in his right mind. He, he had a high pressure uh, job. I think he just gave up on his, on his will to live. He was, he was, sick for a lot longer than we realized um and, all right then um, i'm gonna i'm gonna back up at, at first i thought maybe that was your friend but remember i said it's like you laid down and let go okay he just yeah. went now we have your dad here okay and what he's explaining to me is that he said he felt so lousy so miserable yeah. i'm tasting a lot of salt so that could mean he had issues with blood pressure um, either could be too mm -hmm. low or too high because also in the triggers. And what I'm getting from him is ventricular fibrillation. And a venfib is when the electrical system in your heart slows down and it just dies. I mean, it, it just stops. And, and actually, um, that's the most peaceful passing anyone can have because you go to sleep and you drift off. And that's what he's telling me is it was very, very peaceful. Mm. Um, he keeps giving you or projecting to me to give to you a bunch of cotton, like tons of cotton balls. All right, that, that's a weird one. Could mean cotton candy, but it could be cotton balls. Um, sometimes cotton's one of my triggers for the state of Mississippi because I know it produces a lot of cotton. But is there something about cotton? Like, you know, you use a lot of cotton or maybe you just bought a bag of cotton balls uh, today or the other day, but he keeps talking about cotton. I ate some cotton candy last night. Uh -huh. <laughs> so See, that's what I said. It could be cotton candy. <laughs> okay. So this is the verifiable fact following the message. In other words, the cotton candy is the verify, um, the objectively verifiable fact um, to tell us the message before that, meaning your dad and the ventricular fibrillation, how he passed, that we got it. All right. Um, he says he was an electrical engineer, too. Ooh, and an electrical engineer. He said, you've always been mm -hmm. very inquisitive. You leave no stone unturned. And he said, she's my daughter because of the keen and incisive mind. So dad was really smart and you are really smart. And he's extremely delighted with you. And he wants you to know that. And now he just said Snickers. Snickers, and I'm thinking of the candy bar, you know, I mean, who doesn't like Snickers, except people that, you know, don't like Snickers, but <laughs> Snickers. All right, what's in the Snickers? It's caramel, it's chocolate, it's peanuts, it's, um, but it could be like a name too, like maybe somebody had a cat or a dog named Snickers, but I keep hearing Snickers. 
I don't know because he couldn't eat he couldn't eat nuts. He drank a lot of soda, so he had to have all his teeth pulled at an early age. Right. And, hold on. Hold um, on. He liked hold them, on. He couldn't eat hold, them. hold on. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. When I give a piece of information, it is not always about the spirit. You have to think globally. How does Snickers see? Because what you're doing, and I'm not criticizing, I'm explaining. You're hyperanalyzing. See, you're smart, just like your dad. You're hyperanalyzing on how does this apply to dad? That's not how this works. How does Snickers make sense to you? It could be something about you or somebody close to you, but you know, you know, we get it. He couldn't eat Snickers, but I don't think that's what he's talking about. This is directed more toward you. Maybe it's the name of the new cat that I have that I'm going to adopt. I haven't met, I haven't met yet. Well, I think you got a new name, know. Snickers the cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Pat, what's your take? Tell me about the cat a little bit. Um, I just been I just been looking online on the pet finders and seeing you know, what's available. My my local cat rescue and humane society because I have a I have a rescue right now and he's he was feral before I got him and he's the best cat I've ever had and I just think he would do he would do good with a companion. A companion and, uh, cat. So that's why online. I asked. Yeah. That's why I asked because mm -hmm. you're getting a companion cat. You know, Mark. Mm -hmm. One of these things that happens sometimes is when you know the messages come in. I often like to think about two things. I often think about what you say, Mark, about the spirit. But then I often wonder, cotton candy. I know you love that cotton candy, right? Were you out at an event to have that cotton candy? Like were you at a fair no, or I, something? Cause... No, I just go buy it at Walmart. Yeah. So you got a sweet tooth, don't you? Very much. Okay. So I think there's something else here. Right. Uh, well, I don't have anything reason, against reason, cotton candy. I don't, but it's sugar. Oh, I gotcha. I follow okay. you. My my dad was diabetic. Oh, that's okay. Dude, I don't. I, you know, I don't need to say any more to you, right? All right, right, but the reason I was calling, hoping to get a message was from my other cat companion that I'm having a lot of issues over grief, grief and, hold, and guilt. Hold, hold on, Let, let's back up a bit. What I want is what you want and what the other side knows <laughs> you need to hear are often two different things. Two different things and today. Dr. Right. Dr. Pat, as always, hit the nail on the head with two the sugar issue. Two different things today. Right. She said, I don't need to say any more. Well, I'll say some more sugar 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 and diabetes tends to be an inherited mm. disease cotton candy snickers and dr pat put it all together so i'm spelling mm -hmm. it out for you let's cool it yeah. with the sugar cut way yeah. way way back because the other side is coming through this is what's known as spirit intervention to help head yeah. off at the pass and extremely difficult condition to deal with. Go ahead, Dr. Yeah. Pat. We're not medical doctors, but I want to tell you, this is the interpretation of this. I've been doing this with Mark now for a couple of years. When right. a spirit, my experience is when someone comes through from the other side, you you came on the show and you said you wanted a message, correct? Yes. I was hoping, yes. You got a message. The message you got mm -hmm. is the most important message you could have possibly asked for because the spirit I don't say S, the spirits, because I have a funny feeling there are more than a couple of people over there. The spirits are mm -hmm. giving you a caution flag. Okay. And we don't and need to talk about it, right? I mean, like, right. uh, you know, I could see my uncle, my, I could see my uncle Al coming through for me and talking about regatta uh, cheese. I could see him coming through. You know what I know what that message is? You're eating too much pizza, Pat. Back off. See, I would know that, <laughs> right? Because that would be what he would do. Just take a look and take a breath and ask yourself the question, how do I want the quality of my life to be as I move forward? And nutrition and what we put in our body is very important now. You know, this this is it. Go see a nutritionist. Go see somebody else. But that's my interpretation of that message. It really is about looking looking after you. See, they're looking after her, right? Mark? They are. 
They are. And because twice you've said, well, what I wanted was, and, <laughs> and, and Dr. Pat said, they gave you the most important message. And I'm not being critical of you because yeah. people oftentimes go into a reading with, I want, I want, I want, yeah. which is another form of what I call the no, no, no syndrome where you're blocking. So let's put what you want, want, want off to the side and listen yeah. to what your father who loves you more than anything is coming yeah. through to tell you. And yep. that is what you need tonight. Yeah. And remember the journey that we take is one step at a time. I'm not telling you not to ever eat cotton candy again, right? It's just a right. one step at a time message for you. I think he wished that he would have taken better care of his health while, you know, while he was here. And I think, isn't that the message he's trying to give you? I believe so. Okay, good. Thank you All so right. much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. You're Listen welcome. To yeah, I got to tell you, my my uncle, my uncle would have been all over that telling me about the pizza. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we live in a society where um, we have so many things that taste good that are readily <laughs> available. And the problem is a lot of them are are not good for you. I know. So we, you know, what did Hippocrates say? Let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. And I don't think cotton candy is on the medicine list. Um, yeah. Yeah. And if you listen to one of the unstuckable shows that I did, I can't remember, maybe six weeks ago, you heard me say you just ate your disease. Now, there was a whole lot more that was said in there by a bunch of experts, <laughs> uh, because, you know, sometimes we get the message from our human being friends. Mark, thank you so much again. Please thank tell you. people um, how they get a hold of you. And I'd love for you to tell us what your personal message is today. Well, um, the healing power of spirit communication is is my message, and I invite everyone to sign up for my newsletter by visiting afterlifefrequency.com, and I do have two light circles limited to six people each, August 9th and August 10th coming up, and my personal message is that spirits are here to help us. They're not here to scare us, and they're here to bring us messages of love, healing, and resolution. And that's why it's a present. And that's why this is Christmas in July. Thank you, Mark. Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to The Psychic in the Dark with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat but silly right here on transformationtalkradio.com hey look come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests and you know what even mark and me we'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife extraordinary problems yeah they do they require extraordinary solutions but step into the world of possibilities with us on the psychic and the doc that's every thursday 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. That's TransformationTalkRadio.com. And don't forget, we're also live face-to-face -face on Facebook.com, Transformation Talk Radio. <laughs>